Good morning, everyone. Mr. Gerard E., Chairman, Charity Council. Mr. Lo Pak Young, Commissioner of Charities, distinguished speakers, panelists, guests, ladies and gentlemen. I warmly welcome you to the third Charity Governance Conference. We are indeed honored and humbled to be able to organize this year's conference with the support of the Charities Council as part of our Singapore Corporate Governance Week activities. After the uh, club issue crisis that saw the formation of SIS in 1999, investors were in need of investor education and also needed better protection for their investments in listed companies. Companies were also in need of improving best practices in governance and transparency. Th that is when we put in place market initiatives to strengthen corporate governance and transparency. You would recall that the Asian financial crisis was the result of failures of governance practices in comp companies in the whole of Asia. We also saw the need to protect investments of our citizens in listed companies. It is with the investors in mind that CIAS continues to promote good corporate governance practices and standards through various initiatives. For the market, high standards of corporate governance facilitate investment and growth through a level of transparency and thus creates confidence in the market. For the company, pursuing high corporate governance standards facilitates capital raising and reduces cost of capital. For the investors, they enjoy safety, higher valuations, and better liquidity of the shares of the companies they are invested in. Therefore, it is with this in mind that SIAS continues to push for greater standards in corporate governance practices. So why is governance importance to charities? For charities, it is important to have a strong regulatory governance structure. This is because unlike the shareholders in a listed company, the general public, whilst they are strong and enthusiastic in supporting a cause of a charity, they are not necessarily in a position to analyze its finances, balance sheets, or governance practices and board of trustees, nor are they interested. So there is a need to have a robust source of accountability. In this case, the regulators play a much larger role. Another point is that often charities want to be democratic and inclusive. They want to involve people who are enthusiastic and well-meaning. But often that does not mean you have people who have the skills and expertise to necessarily to be on the board of trustees of a charity. Hence sometimes you could create a situation where you may have ineffective governance. The board must be able to hold management accountable and ask the right questions. Otherwise, management will be left to run without proper accountability. Therefore, governance in charities should be even more strictly supervised than listed companies. As donors don't seek nor do they get accountability, I am of the view that there needs to be stronger regulation, better education for the Board of Trustees, and a more rigorous nomination and appointment process. It is not just about those who have time and are enthusiastic, but those who have the necessary qualifications. Perhaps we should create a situation where qualified corporate directors cross over to the charity boards. Charities could also have professionals join the board to manage and guide the charities. Possibly to increase the effectiveness of governance in charities, in some countries the regulators have begun board evaluation process, and even conduct spot checks. Charities can also upgrade their governance capabilities by education. 
attending courses. Whilst these requirements may be seen as external measures, having governance as part of the DNA of a charity, rather than an afterthought, will go a long way in improving the governance practices. For example, having a whistleblowing policy and a process to manage it would go a very long way to improving the governance practices of charities. So how does SIS practice good governance as a charity? We have become a charity since last August. Firstly, external audit. When I first started SIS in 1999, as a non-profit organization registered under the Registry of Societies, we didn't have to have yearly audits by law. But as a matter of good governance practice, we appointed external auditors to audit the accounts from the very first year. Many smaller organizations and charities would deem this as an added expense. But I saw this as something necessary to create trust and help improve our accountability to our stakeholders. The external audit helped to provide assurance to SIS members, then about 50,000 and now we have 72,000, Sponsors, donors, and the public, and the annual general meeting process provides accountability to all stakeholders. Then internal controls. In addition, the management committee has always managed high levels of internal controls at SIS. For instance, up, till, up until now, every dollar and check payment required a minimum of two signatures. We have also in place a procurement policy reviewed by the audit committee. Oversight. As check and balance for the president and management committee, the constitution was also amended to allow for a chairman to be nominated by the management committee. The independent chairman is to ensure that the president and management committee act in the interest of the association. Independent committees. We have also set up audit nomination and remuneration committees. Both the audit and nomination committees are made up of majority independent volunteers who are also not on the management committee to ensure independence. Let me share with you an unexpected experience my wife and I had in South Korea recently. Like listed companies, I do appreciate that the culture and the tone at the top in charities varies, as ethics, whether in financial institutions, listed companies or charities, relates to trust. The public would always expect from you trust and you to be trustworthy. Let me share with you an experience. Having heard much of Pastor Cho Yong Yi of South Korea and his enormous church, my wife and I, out of curiosity, visited the church in South Korea to see the much talked about sanctuary. Having been taken round by the pastor on duty, we decided to make a small donation to the church and handed it over to the pastor on duty. And we thought that was it and we were about to turn to get to our car. But upon receipt of the donation, the pastor asked us to wait just a few seconds, and then promptly and unexpectedly brought a receipt for the small amount for the donation. We were surprised, and we said we don't need a receipt because we are not used to it. The small act of acknowledgement by this church gave us an idea of the level of accountability and governance in that church. We talked much about it on our trip back to the hotel I trust that you will find the discussions at this conference interesting and useful. I wish you all an enjoyable day. Thank you.